welcome to Chris Cook for you too. Today I felt like making lasagna. So that's what it is. We're going to be making lasagna. So let's get started with the ingredients that you're going to need to make this delicious dish. You're going to need, of course, the lasagna noodles there down front. I'm going to use more than one container, but I only have one container out here. And you'll cook that according to the package instructions, minus three minutes. So you'll cook it according to the package instructions, but take away three minutes. You're going to need fresh parsley. If you don't have fresh, you can go ahead and use dried. You're going to need your sauce. I'm using Prego sauce because I believe in working smarter and not harder and prego sauce works for me if you want to make your own sauce or if you want to use marinara sauce go ahead and do that you're going to need oregano granulated garlic salt and pepper mozzarella cheese you're going to need some sugar to kill that acid and in your tomatoes or in your tomato sauce you're going to need onion. You don't have to use onion. You can go without it, but I'm going to use onion in mine. Here in the background, I have ground beef. And up front, I have some sweet Italian sausage. And what this is, is the Italian sausage that's in the casing. If you want to just get it and take it out of the casing, you can. If you want to do without using Italian sausage altogether, you can. You can make it with the ground beef if that's what you choose. Or you can make it with ground turkey, ground chicken. Anything that you want, you can use it. You're going to need eggs. And you're going to need ricotta cheese. Now, you don't have to use ricotta cheese. You can use cottage cheese. I've made it both ways, and both ways it is delicious. So if you want to use ricotta, it's a little bit more expensive. You can. If not, you can just go ahead and use the, um, the uh, cottage cheese. Now, this is the pan that when I post the ingredients, I'll be posting it for this pan. This pan is will feed six people. This is your smaller of your aluminum pans. But what I'm going to make it in today is going to be this pan. And this is an 11 by 17 pan. It's about three inches deep, maybe two and a half, three inches deep. So I'm going to use this pan in order to make it. Now, one other ingredient that you're going to need, and you can do it or you can do without, you can only use the mozzarella if you choose, but I make mine with a little bit of cheddar as well. So if you want to use cheddar, then you can go ahead and use some cheddar. I'm going to show you how to put this together so it should be relatively easy, and either cheese that you choose to use, that will work out fine. Now, there's a rule of thumb when it comes to making lasagna. You make it with four layers of noodles. Three, I'm sorry, three layers of noodles, four layers of meat sauce, and two layers of cheese. But we're not going to follow that rule. What we're going to do is we're just going to make it until we get enough noodles in here to go to the top of the pan. And that's the same way that you can do it, and it will work out fine. One of the things that I want to show you today about lasagna is you want to make your pies. I've seen lasagna so many times where people cut it. And when they cut it, it just falls apart. That's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to stand rigid. It's supposed to stand firm after you cut it. One of the reasons that it may be falling apart, well, two of the best reasons on why lasagna fall apart is, one, you take it out of the oven and you cut it too fast. You don't give it a chance to all to just mold together. So if you cut it too fast, it's going to fall apart on you. Another one you may have too many uh, loose or liquidy ingredients. That will cause it to fall apart too. So we're not going to have any of that. We're going to give it enough time in order for it to cook and stand tall, and we're not going to have any liquidy ingredients. So I'm going to go away and get myself together to prepare this. I'm going to set my oven for 375 degrees. I'm going to cook it for 30 minutes covered because I don't want my cheese to harden or to cook. Then I'm going to uncover it and cook it for the last 30 minutes. Remember, 
375 degrees. Go ahead and set your oven and let's get ready for this lasagna. I'm feeling it today. Okay, right now back. I'm at the stove and here I have my sausage in with my ground beef. That's okay because it's all going to cook up together. The only thing is the sausage may cook up a little bit lumpier. So I'm going to show you how to get everything uniform in the way that it actually cooks up so it'll spread good when you get ready to make your lasagna. Now in here I'm putting my ingredients which is my salt, my pepper, my garlic salt and um, or garlic powder and my oregano and like I told you the onions are optional you don't have to put in the onions. I'm going to put them in. So I'm going to go ahead and cook this up. Now I'm undercooking my noodles as I showed you. These are undercooked so I'm going to go ahead and just sit them in some cold water. Let them cook about another one minute. Then I'm going to sit them in some cold water and let them wait on this mixture. Now once I get this all ready, once I get it all ground up and, and all um, browned up, I'll bring you right back. And I'll show you what we do for the next step. Be right back. All right, now I'm back at the stove and see all of, see how I got these little bigger pieces. Some of them look a little bit bigger than the other. I have my stove on. That's what you hear sizzling. See, I want all of my meat to look like that, okay? I don't want these big pieces because if you got these big lumps in there, it's going to be harder for you to cut the lasagna. So you don't want that, okay? So what I'm going to do in order to get it like I want to, I'm going to go ahead and add my sauce. Now remember, you can use whatever sauce you want, marinara if you choose to, or you can make your own. And I don't believe in throwing away nothing, so I'm going to add to this about three cups of water. I want to get all that sauce out of there. That's about three cups of water. And I'm going to go ahead and add the sugar. I'll list your ingredients. That's why I'm not saying how much of anything that I'm putting in. Because as you can see, I got a lot of meat. So it's going to be different ingredients that I'm going to use than what you're going to use. Now, I want this to simmer for a while. So I'm going to put a top on in this. I'm going to go ahead and add another cup of water. And this sauce will simmer back down like I want it to. So I'm going to allow this to simmer for about 20 minutes. And that's going to help to break up all of those bigger chunks of the meat, the, gr the burger, the um, ground beef, and the um, sausage. Any lumps that I have will be the one that will help to just break that up. So I'm going to put this a uh, top on this and I'll bring you back in about 15, 20 minutes. Okay, Be now right I'm back. at the table and I have my mixer here. This is my ricotta cheese. Like I said, you can use cottage cheese if that's what you choose to. And you can hand mix this. You do not have to mix this up with a mixer, but I'm going to do it that way because it's a little bit easier for me. Okay, I just wanted to break that up a little bit. And now I'm going to take my eggs. I'm just going to break them up and beat them just a little bit. And then I'm going to add them down into my ricotta cheese. And that's all you're going to add. Because you have your seasonings in your meat sauce. Everything that was the seasoning inside of the prego sauce. And yet everything that you put inside of the meat sauce. You already have that. So the only thing you're going to be adding to this container is just going to be, or to this ricotta cheese, is just going to be your eggs and your parsley. So I'm going to go ahead and add my eggs. And we're going to layer this. So what we're going to be doing is a layer of meat layer of cheese, the ricotta cheese, layer of mozzarella cheese. I'm going to be using uh, 
the mild cheddar as well and a layer of noodles. So you're going to continue to do that until you can get everything all put together. And remember, we're going to go out of the rule of thumb. Like I told you, the rule of thumb is four layers of sauce, three layers of noodles, and two layers of cheese. You don't want to stack it up so high till it looks like a hill or a mountain. You don't want that. You want just the amount that the rule of thumb is. And what that does is that will help you when you get ready to cut as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my parsley. I am using fresh parsley. You don't have to use fresh parsley. You can go ahead and use the uh, dried parsley if that's all you have. And you can omit it. So you don't even have to use it at all. Now that's just enough blending up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my noodles over here get my sauce over here and we're going to go ahead and put this together be right back okay now we're ready to assemble the sauce is still hot but it's not too hot that i can't work with it so i'm just going to go ahead and start this so what you want to do now that i've cooked the sauce down some so that my ground beef and my sausage has broken up a lot more you want to put a layer of meat sauce at the bottom and like I told you we're not gonna follow the rule of thumb when it comes to making this we're just gonna go ahead and continue until we run out of room in the pan basically and then that will be it now you're gonna put down a layer of sauce first and I'm making two that's why you see so much sauce because I'm gonna freeze one for a later date and that way I won't have to worry about dinner so you put down a layer of sauce, and that's a thin layer of sauce. You don't want to put down a lot of sauce. Then you start to take your noodles, and you start to put them down. Now, it doesn't matter if your noodles break in half. It doesn't matter if they're stuck together like this one stuck together. That's because I drained the water off. So just go ahead and peel them apart, and then just lay them into the pan. And it doesn't matter what order that you laid them in the pan. None of that is, I mean, that's not important. It's not relevant. Just go ahead and put them in any way that you can because you're going to be cutting this. Okay? So when you get to a corner like that and you only have a small amount of room, then just go ahead and tear one of your noodles and then fill the space. Okay, now once you layer that in, the next thing that you're going to put in is some of your ricotta cheese or your cottage cheese, depending on which one you use. It really doesn't matter. You're going to put that in. And then you're going to take a spatula or the back of a spoon you can use the back of a spoon and you're going to spread that just to make certain that it's hitting all of your noodles or all of your pasta. Add just a little bit more to make certain that we got everything all layered out okay now once you get that covered and you don't need to put a lot just make certain that you kind of layer it there you go as best you can the next thing you're gonna do is to use if you use one cheese you're gonna put one cheese if you're using two cheese you're gonna put two cheese now you need that mozzarella that's the cheese that you can't change when it comes to making lasagna. And the reason be is because you need that pull. And that's the best uh, cheese when it comes to making this. Now what you don't need and what you don't have to use is the cheddar. Get that before it falls. But I told you in the beginning, I sprinkled just a little bit of cheddar. And this is a mild cheddar on mine. And as you can see, that's not a lot, okay? 
and then you're gonna start that process all over again next go back to your meat sauce Now this is a real good dish and I've been doing this for years. Rarely do I make it homemade. I normally just go and get um, a Stouffer's lasagna and then just pop it in the oven. But I didn't want that today. I wanted something that really tastes like lasagna not taste like hospital food. Okay, now once you get your meat back down then you're going to go back to the same process that you started with and you're going to keep on doing that until you get to the top and like i told you if you follow the rule of thumb everything should work out and your lasagna should be a normal size looking like everybody else's lasagna and remember i, un I undercooked my noodles so what I'm going to do, this was just to show you exactly how to get this process done. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, so I don't prolong the video, and you see exactly what I'm doing, I'm going to continue to complete this until I get to the top. And then I'll bring it back and I'll show you what it looks like so we'll finish out this layer and this is very good I mean very good but I always try to work smarter with my dishes and not harder and I try to show you in a way that I know that you can go back and do it and you can do it and feel really good about I'm going to have the same outcome that she had because the instructions were so simple so simple <laughs> and easy to follow okay so now So you get that on. Okay. Then we're going to go right back to adding our juicy. Mm. Go right back to adding our cheeses. What I was going to say about juicy is that you don't want this to be juicy. You don't want it to be running. And you don't need to measure the the amount of cheese that you're putting down because some people will write me and say well did you measure how much cheese you put on each layer no all i did was took some and sprinkled it down there so to prevent that being said and just do exactly what you see me do in the tutorial and you will be fine Okay, you can see it to that point, and I'm going to go ahead and keep on going to the top, probably two more layers, and that's going to be the extent of it, so I'll bring you back when I get to the top, be right back. Okay, now I am done with this one, and it's getting ready to go into the oven. I told you the first 30 minutes I'm going to cover it with foil, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to tint this foil a little bit, because I don't want it to mess up this layer of cheese. So I'm going to tint it just a little bit, and I'm going to put it all around this dish. And in order to get it to rise up, I just kept my hand stuck up underneath it to rise it up. 
because I don't want it to mess up my cheese. If you don't have problems with it, then you can just go ahead and leave it like it is. Now, I'm going to put this in for the first 30 minutes. I'm going to put it on 375 degrees, allow it to cook for at least 30 minutes, and then I'm going to take this cover off and I'm going to allow it to cook for the last 30 minutes. May bring you back and show you when I get ready to take the cover off. I don't know. But anyway, it's prepared. It's ready. Now we just put it in the oven and wait on the results. Be okay, right back. Okay, now uh, it's 30 minutes into the cooking process. So I'm going to, it's at this point that I'll go ahead and take off the top. And I really don't want to remove it from the oven. Okay. And now I'll let it finish baking so the top can go ahead and get done. But that's the way it looks so far. And I'll bring it back in 30 minutes. Okay, now we're back. And this is ready. There you go. My oven just went off. That's what it looks like. That's the lasagna. I got some French bread sitting over here and I made this. What I just did was just took a loaf of French bread and I cut it up, buttered it down, and then added some garlic, granulated garlic to it. And then I toasted it off in the oven. So I'm going to give this about 15, 20 minutes, at least 20 minutes before I cut it. It will still be warm. I'll bring it back when I get ready to cut. Be right back. Okay. I'm cutting this out because I've already taken out one piece. And now I'm going to take out this piece. But see how it stands straight. Then I just want to put it down on the plate. There it is. And that's exactly how yours should look. Okay? When you cut it, look in here. When you cut that, that should cut straight. It shouldn't be runny. It shouldn't be all over everywhere. It should cut straight and you should be able to lift it out. So we're just getting ready to eat. So I can just go ahead and cut this next piece. And I'm cutting with the wrong thing, but it doesn't matter. There you go. And if I had a plate, see how it comes loose? And it just stands straight. That's what it's supposed to do. So this is what we're having tonight. Chris is making lasagna and French bread. Okay, I felt like lasagna today, so I just wanted to prepare it, and I think that if you try this, you are truly going to enjoy it. Somebody did ask me about it this week, but I don't remember which one of my viewers asked me about it, but there she has it. And as always, thank you for watching Chris Cook for you too. Bye.